हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम इन टू दी थर्ड लेक्चर ऑन हाई परफॉर्मेंस थीन लेयर क्रोमेटोग्राफी माय सेल्फ मिस्टर एम एस पले आई एम वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट कोकले एजुकेशन सोसाइटीज आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड साइंस कॉलेज चवार सो इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वे हैव सीन the sequence of steps in hpclc technique into that we have covered many of the step the last step will be remaining into the hpclc sorry hptlc steps that will be the detection and visualization so into the detection and visualization last time we have seen the scanning densitometer what will be the that that scanning densitometer that will be the instrument which is used for measurement of visible uv observance fluorescence and fluorescence quenching which is directly on the layer without resorting to scraping and elution so this is the scanning densitometer that will be useful for the scan the spot that will be available on the tlc plate the measurement actually done usually made up of reflection from the plate using single beam double beam or single beam dual wavelength operation of scanning instrument that means for the observation of that spot here we are going to use a single beam density meter double beam density meter or we can say single beam dual wavelength operation okay that we are going to see today actually the purpose of this scanner is to convert the spot or band on the layer into chromatogram see in hpc we have seen the chromatogram like that in this hptl cell so we are getting at the end the chromatograph for that purpose we are going to use this instrument the position of the peak on the recorder chart is related to the rf value of the spots so same as that of previous lecture into today's lecture we are going to actually learn double beam density meter in single beam density meter we have seen all the component of that single beam density meter that is radiation source collimating lens entrance lead monochromator converging lens and the plate and the final will be the main part of that detector that we have learned in previous lecture so in today's lecture we are going to see the second from the scanning density meter second will be the double beam density meter the operation of the double beam density meter <coughs> so in double beam density meter actually it's working generally same as that of the double beam spectrophotometer first of all we will see actual working of that double beam density meter it will be used for quantitative evaluation by recording absorbance or fluorescence that means when we scan the plate below this double beam density meter we are observing or recording the absorbance that means whatever light falls on that separated component that separated component or the sample either that light will be absorbed and it will may be emit the fluorescence that we are going to record into this double beam density meter a double beam density meter is similar in design to a double beam spectrophotometer in a double beam density meter 
a single beam coming from a monochromator falls on a beam splitter which is split it into two beams actually how it's split that we're going to see into the schematic diagram of the double beam density meter one beam falls on the plate where there are no spots and another beam falls exactly where a separated spot that is sample components are there that means half part of the light which is coming from the monochromator that will be falls on the blank spot of the tsc plate and half of the light will be falls on the actually separated component or the sample component these two beam reflected back and fall on the separate detectors that means both the beam when it will reflect from the blank side and from the sample side that will be reaches up to the separate detector that means each beam we have kept here separate detector that's why we call as double beam output from the two detectors is proceed to produce a net signal corresponding to the concentration of the component in the spot see when both the beam reaches up to the detector then it will process and it will produce a net signal that means blank reading shows there is no signal and the separated component beam shows a particular characterized or we can say net signal which is corresponding to the how much concentration of the sample component present into that separated spot that will be totally depend on that sample component now we will see the schematic diagram of the double beam density meter schematic diagram so this is the double beam density meter schematic diagram so in this schematic diagram first component this will be the source or can say radiation source it will emit the uv light then second component will be the collimating lens then entrance slit and monochromator this part we have seen in single beam density meter also these four component we have seen in previous lecture also so here will be the beam splitter that means this three could be this beam coming from this monochromator that will be split into two this is first and this is second one that will be again falls on this converging type of lens there are two type two lens kept here for each beam these are the converging lens and here there will be the plate that is hptsc plate where this is the blank spot that means in this part of this plate there is no any sample component present and this part there is the separated sample component will be there and this is the detector which is separate for only sample component and this detector only kept for the blank spot or okay say blank reading so when these two will be combined with each other then we will get the corresponding net signal of the chromatogram okay so actually these are the component of the double beam density meter now again we will see first that is radiation source this radiation source emit the light in all direction that all direction light when it will some amount of light will be falls on this collimating lens this 
this is actually called as bahir vakra virga in marathi so in this lens the light falls will be passing through this and translate this lens will be convert all light in one direction convert all light in one direction that will be going through this and translate this is the and translate when it will, it will going through this and translate falls on this monochromator this monochromator monochromator it will absorb the unwanted radiations and passing the light in single beam okay mono means single beam actually coming light which is from the radiation source that will be actually polychromatic light that will be converted to the single beam and that single beam which is going through this monochromator that will be falls on this beam splitter see this is this one will be the beam splitter that means half of light which is coming from this monochromator that will be, that will be going through this lens and half of light will be going through this second converging type of lens then there's that converging type of lens that lens the convert all light in a one spot single spot and falls on the single spot from both the sides reference as well as black sorry sample side and the plate will be scanned below these points see actually in this part of this plate there is no any separated component that means only hptsc plate will be there that means whatever light falls on this part of the plate it will showing the blank reading into this detector part but from coming half light will be falls on half of part of this plate where this separated sample component will be present then that sample component absorb that light and it will emit the fluorescence that will be going or you can say reflected additional radiations going into this separate detector which is kept for the sample only and when both the signal that means blank signal and sample signal combine with each other which is corresponding and create a net signal that means in the recorder it will show the chromatogram when the blank reading is there there is no signal but if the separate component will be there into this part of the tlc plate it will show the net signal and we will get the chromatogram of that sample component so this is the double beam density meter we have covered the scanning density meter under this scanning density meter we have seen single beam density meter and double beam density meter now the second part from the detection and visualization that will be the fluorometry detector that we are going to see now so fluorometry detector this type of detector will be used again for the detection of this separated component on tlc plate first we will see its working of the fluorometric detector it is similar in design to a fluorometer in which fluorescence is observed by a photoelectric transducer located at 90 degree to the incident beam c just like fluorometer here we are keeping the photoelectric transducer or can say detector part at 90 degree to the incident beam a mercury vapor lamp or xenon lamp used as a radiation source see in this fluorometer detector 
either mercury vapor lamp or xenon lamp will be used as a radiation source a light from mercury vapor lamp or xenon lamp passes into a primary filter which is again going through the collimating lens and passes through the primary filter the primary filter absorb visible radiation and only allow uv light to pass through it see that means the role of primary filter is what it will absorb visible radiation and pass only uv radiations through it that uv light falls on the sample which emits visible fluorescence light see the uv light falls when falls on sample it will absorb that uv light and emit the visible fluorescence light and that light or you can say the beam coming from sample at right angle to the direction of incident beam falls on secondary filter that secondary filter absorbs uv light and allows fluorescent radiation that is coming from sample to pass through it the net signal is calculated by comparing it with the signal of the blank and we will get the chromatogram into the recorder part see these are the actually working now we will see its schematic diagram of the fluorimetric detector see the diagram see this is the schematic diagram of the fluorimetric detector in this diagram first will be the radiation source this one second will be the slit entrance slit collimating lens primary filter and converging lens then there is a plate rectangular shape there is a plate SPTS plate and this exactly right angle so see exactly right angle to this there is again collimating lens secondary filter and the converging type of lens and at the end there is the detector part of this fluorimeter okay actually these are the all component of the fluorimetric detector now first we will see a radiation source so this one this is the radiation source that will be used as a either mercury vapor lamp or xenon lamp that we have seen just now that will be a light from mercury vapor lamp or the xenon lamp passes into the this primary filter through this entrance lid and this collimating lens or you can say converging type of lens this primary filter it will absorb the visible radiation which is coming along with the uv light from this radiation source this primary filter is what it will be used to absorb visible radiations and it will pass only the ultraviolet light or you can say ultraviolet radiations that will be going through this converging type of lens this converging type of lens focus all that uv light into the single spot this single spot and the plate will be the scan through this single spot of uv light then whatever separated component present on the plate that will be the when it will come in below the beam of that light uv light it will absorb that uv light and it will emit the 
fluorescence light or fluorescence radiation of the sample component that will be directly going into the right angle to this incident beam see like this that emitted fluorescence radiation along with uv light that will be going through this collimating or converging type of lens and falls on this secondary filter this secondary filter that will absorb the uv light and pass only the fluorescent radiations that will be emitted by the sample component and which is going through this converging type of lens and falls on this detector it will calculate or you can say it will create a characteristic net signal along with the blank reading and it will show the chromatogram into the recorder so this is the fluorimetric detector working of the fluorimetric detector so in next lecture we are going to learn the advantages of hptsc limitations of the hptsc and application and comparison of tlc and hptsc plate so thank you dear student